Mayor Pete recently appeared on an episode of CBS This Morning, and surprisingly, he was actually asked a question that's relatively hard. Um, you know, the narrative currently is that he's not doing very well among black voters. On top of that, he's not doing very well among Latino voters. But as much as he champions generational change, nobody talks about the fact that he's also not doing very well among young voters. So he was asked why he thinks that might actually be the case. So I'm going to play the clip. Note that there is a little bit of a filter on this clip. Um, I've had some problems in the past playing CBS video, so I hope that that will kind of thwart any, um, you know, false copyright claims. Nonetheless, we'll roll with it. This is what he had to say. His response is incredibly condescending, especially when it gets to the portion where he talks about how young voters are actually flocking to Bernie Sanders and not him. Take a look. A new generation of leadership. And if you became president, you would be the youngest president in history. And yet you don't have a majority of young voters in this country, according to polls. Is there a way in which you're out of touch with your own generation? No, but it is certainly no. the case that often then younger you candidates no tend to attract more support from older voters. But we are building a coalition that's going to draw voters from every part of this country. Uh, now, certainly you're at three and four percent among people under the age of 44 in South Carolina. It's almost as bad as minority voters. What explains that gap? Look, uh, there's going to be a continued process to earn support across the coalition. But it's certainly the case that uh, many of the younger voters are more attracted to, uh, for example, uh, uh, you know, the Sanders campaign definitely has more young voters. Um, I was uh, a big fan of Bernie Sanders when I was 18 years old. Uh, it's also the case that we are pulling together a coalition to talk about issues like climate, to act on issues like climate and guns and the economy, that the longer you're planning to be here, the more you have at stake. And young voters have to mobilize in a way that hasn't happened before. Oh, we are. It's just that we're mobilizing around Bernie Sanders and not you. Now, I was honestly surprised that he was asked a question this hard. I know I already said that at the beginning of this clip, but it's honestly astonishing. This individual has gotten a complete pass from the mainstream media. He's been worshipped as if he's a demigod, and all of a sudden, they're finally starting to give him a little bit of scrutiny. And you can tell that he can't handle it. He is unraveling. Um, whenever a protester or an organizer shows up to one of his events, you see the way that he responds with condescension and, you know, dismissing their concerns. So for him to, you know, be asked a tough question on the mainstream media, first of all, great on that uh, individual for asking the question. But uh, second of all, you know, you can see that he's really biting his tongue because he wants to give some type of smug reaction and he was still smug, but I think he wants to get testy, but he has to kind of refrain from doing that. Um, so he was asked, if you became president, you'd be the youngest president in history and yet you don't have a majority of young voters. Is there a way in which you're out of touch with your own generation? The answer is yes, but Pete responded saying, no, but it certainly is the case that younger candidates tend to attract more support from older voters, which I think is interesting. Um, but actually remembering now, back in 2008, when Barack Obama was the youngest candidate running in the Democratic Party primaries, uh, you know, there were actually mostly old people flocking to Obama. Do you remember that? No? Oh, that's right, because it didn't happen. In fact, Obama was the youngest candidate, and he also had the youth vote on lock. And as Pew Research pointed out, 66% of those under age 30 voted for Barack Obama, making the disparity between young voters and other age groups larger than in any presidential election since exit polling began in 1972. In other words, what you just said is bullshit, and young people vote based on policy and most of the time they are excited by the candidate who is on the left and functionally you are a boomer pete you may be 37 but you are functionally a boomer you've got that boomer mentality which is why millennials don't fuck with you period end of story but in his view the reason why we don't like him is possibly because maybe we're naive now he didn't say this i don't want to put words in his mouth but he kind of suggested it. So uh, this is what pissed me off. He said, it certainly is the case that many of the younger voters are more attracted to, for example, the Sanders campaign definitely has more young voters. I was a big fan of Sanders when I was 18 years old. Why don't you go ahead and finish the thought, Pete? Finish the thought. Why did you only support him when you were 18? 
What do you want to say? We know he wants to say something smug like, well, but then I grew up. Then I got educated. Then, you know, I started to see the world for what it is and became more pragmatic and less idealistic. Complete the fucking thought, Pete, because we know exactly what you want to say. That we're dumb and anyone who doesn't support you must be misguided. But you see, the thing is, no matter what we all know he wants to say, which is that we're naive, in actuality, you're the one that changed because you're a political opportunist. You decided to not be progressive. You decided to sell out and take corporate money because you saw that as an easier path to victory. Because even if, you know, being principled and rejecting corporate money like Bernie Sanders has done makes you more popular among the youth, well, that still makes your route to the White House more difficult because if the establishment hates you, if people in power don't like you, then they can use the institutional advantages that they have to make your White House run more difficult. So it's easier to just acquiesce and, you know, fall in line and do what the establishment wants. That's what Pete decided to do, not because he's running on any big idea. I don't even know what he stands for. He's running because he wants to be president. He wants to be in the history books as the first gay president. Well, guess what? Nobody gives a shit if you're going to continue to fuck us over like every other previous president. See, it doesn't matter to me that I'm being fucked over by the first female president or the first gay president and that we are marching towards climate catastrophe while taking almost no action. Um, but we're doing it under the first blank president. I don't care. You see, descriptive representation is good insofar as it produces substantive representation. You will not represent us in a substantive way. So, you know, he changed not because of political ideology, but because of political opportunism. And that is the thing about Pete that I think is becoming more apparent. So the more I see Mayor Pete, the more I dislike him because I don't think there is a more pretentious, smug, and condescending person person running for president. I mean, even fucking if you combine like John Delaney and Amy Klobuchar, I don't think they're even half as pretentious together as Pete Buttigieg is. Like, he's smug, he feels as if, you know, he's entitled to the presidency and anyone who dares to challenge him uh, or confront him about his corruption, they are inconveniencing him. And, you know, that's just, that's ridiculous. So, I'm over it. I cannot stand Pete, and I am not looking forward to establishment Democrats trying to shove him down our throats every four to eight years whenever there is a presidential election when a Democratic, you know, uh, individual is not president. I'm not looking forward to that because I can't stand him. I can't wait for him to go away. But, you know, something tells me he's going to be around for a very long time, unfortunately. Beta male, not a beta male.